Um, so for our, our last two presenters, we have joining right now, fabulous Dan O'Neill. He's gonna be uh, telling us about building not just any data flows, dynamic data flows, I'll have you know, with Coop, the uh, coolest project that no one knows about, and PostGIS. We'll I've, see. Seen, I've seen some pretty amazing Coop talks, so let's see if you can, uh, you can outdo them. <laughs> and yeah, after Dan, it'll be myself. Um, I've uncorked the bottle of Irish whiskey and uh, I'm ready to celebrate at the end of post this day. All right, cool. So, yep, thanks for that introduction. Um, Going to talk a little bit about, uh, work quickly through building uh, some dynamic data flows with Coop and Post GIS. Uh, my name is Dan O'Neill, and yeah, so this project sort of came out of uh, um, sort of a UI on the front end of a service that could, you know, take some backend PostGIS data and um, and for some ESRI users be able to uh, bring that data into ArcGIS online. So this is. Um, a uh, little abstract of that of that process. So we'll start with what is Coop. Um, and you may be familiar with it, but it's essentially a uh, JavaScript framework uh, that's sponsored by ESRI for uh, connecting spatial APIs, right? So it can its intention is to take uh, data from some format and uh, be able to uh, output into another format. Um, and it basically uses Ge GeoJSON uh, as the conversion. Uh, layer and the outputs we'll be talking about today are essentially uh, the uh, supported ones that come by default. Well, GeoServices comes by default, which is basically the JSON that uh, ESRI uses. And then uh, there's an external provider that, you, that provided by them that allows you to convert them into vector tiles as well. Uh, so that's all about Coop. Uh, we'll take a look at them a little bit later, um, but we're here for uh, a provider called Coop Provider PG. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about what that is. So as I said, um, essentially what Coop does is uh, has an extension framework which allows you to build uh, providers and the providers are uh, data formats that you want to bring into the system that exports out into the output formats. So the PG provider is essentially a Postgres, PostGIS provider um, that queries that spatial data on the back end. Um, and it's not, it's not doing anything too magical other than, you know, exporting or um, uh, converting that spatial data uh, PostGIS does into the GeoJSON format and handing that GeoJSON format to Coop and then allowing Coop to, um, output it in the format that you you want to output it in uh, uh, specifically geoservices and uh, vector tile today so uh, the way it works is you um, configure your database uh, as first thing you'll you will do and you can either set that up as uh, environment variables on your system or there's a uh, config files provided uh, for you um, so either one of those, you, uh, you give it your DB connection information, the host port, uh, the database that you want to connect to, uh, and then your authentication uh, user password. Uh, it has the ability to uh, customize your the column for the ob object ID. So it'll default to GID if you don't provide any, but if you do provide in that config file or in that environment area, with uh, your custom ID, it will use that um, or look for that in the PostGIS database. Um, so it has a little bit of flexibility there on how you um, how your data is stored on the back end. Uh, and then essentially, this is some just some of what the code itself does. It's a, it's a, basically a JavaScript code base and with some SQL commands. And so we have your uh, feature collection here that will create 
uh, um, that GeoJSON output out of PostGIS, uh, taking in data like that ID we just talked about, what the geometry column is, uh, what the table is, um, and it has the ability to um, um, seek out that spatial reference ID and use that uh, format from PostGIS. So the way you get started working with it um, is first you got to install uh, the CLI for KubeJS. Um, so that's a this is all uh, an NPM package that you install. And then you would, this is from a user perspective, not necessarily a developer perspective, but then you would uh, create an app, a new app based on that. And this example calls it PG Coop. Um, you go into that app folder and that's where you can add your extensions, right? Your plugins. So you can add providers, outputs, uh, caching mechanisms, a few other things, uh, you, depending on how sophisticated you want, want to make it. But for the intent of this, demonstration, uh, we would add the Coop provider PG, um, and then we're pretty much ready to go. So it's pretty pretty uh, quick and painless. Uh, it starts a little Express JS server, and you will be able to um, uh, have a bunch of outputs where you can access the data from now. Uh, so the way the service endpoint works, the format is, uh, is the Coop server instance. Um, the provider framework that's provided by the uh, PG provider, and then whatever that output type is. So um, a local installation uh, example would be the instance would be uh, the service running on port 8080. Uh, the provider framework is PG, and what we provide, what, what you as a user would provide is the schema.table, right? into your PostGIS data using that connection uh, information that you provided earlier and then whatever the output type is. So here we get a feature server and get that, um, uh, that initial layer out of that feature server. So here are some of the examples of what the outputs might, will look like. Um, you'll see that uh, for the PG provider and it has uh, um, that ID that we provide with the schema and um, um, table and some of the other uh, accesses into uh, the, the feature server and our map server. And for vector tile, we have uh, these outputs as well. Again, in order to set up vector tile, you um, you would add a um, uh, that export uh, to your app that you created earlier. So we got get and post methods there. So we can, at this point, uh, with the server up and running, we can query the uh, whatever schema and table in that spatial database that you provided. And you'll get returned the JSON format uh, from the geoservices side, which is the um, ESRI JSON format, spatial data format. Um, so as an example there of what that looks like. Um, and then you can start using it in, in different APIs, right? So here's an example of how you might add it to a um, ESRI leaflet map, right? That takes in a uh, feature layer. So now that we export it out, uh, we just provide it our access to the database and um, go get those feature server layers and then add it to the map. Uh, another way to quickly verify that everything's transforming correctly is uh, you can just bring it right into ArcGIS Online as a web map um, using that viewer uh, web map viewer URL and appending the um, uh, the formatted URL into your data. So enough talking about it. Let's look at some. Let's demonstrate it a little bit. So. Um, First, we'll start with the Coop website. So you, you can go out here, uh, again, sponsored by ESRI, um, tell you all about it. But what we're interested in is the plugins, right? So as you go to plugins, you'll see the different providers that uh, you can put as input into uh, the Coop server. Um, the officially supported ones are listed there. Um, and if you go under third party, 
and you go under Postgres, Postgres, uh, at the bottom there, you'll see the, um, the provider for you. And that links out to um, uh, the GitHub repository. And we'll talk a little bit about that at the end. Um, so there's your list of providers. That's how you discover it. Um, follow, uh, read up as much as you'd like about it. Uh, the only other thing we'll look at from a plugin perspective are the outputs, right? So that's the other side of the equation. We're putting data in with providers and we're outputting data um, through Coop. And so uh, obviously the, the main intention here is the geoservices, um, which is that JSON format we, we saw on the slide and then uh, uh, vector tiles. Right, so those are some of the officially supported. So let's take a look a little bit at some of the data we'll we'll play around with here in the demo. Um, so here's uh, some PostGIS data. This is a Tundra polygon layer. Uh, you can see we have uh, um, that being viewed here in our client. Uh, a couple other um layers we'll look at as well potentially are uh some alaskan trails and maybe some airports right so points line and a polygon data um so that's it in looking at it in uh directly into uh, the postgres database we'll return back here and we'll see that um if we just go out to um, to our AK airports, which is this data here, um, we will see that it's it converts over into um, that JSON format that's provided by GeoServices. So we can update this with, let's say, the Tundra, and that'll update uh, with our Tundra layer. Uh, the layers being provided by Coop Provider, and you can and you can you can inspect the JSON right there. Another way to sort of look at that same data is we can come in here and make this a little bigger for you. Uh, we can curl into it. So here we'll curl into that airports uh, data set, and we'll query it and put the return into a little JSON file. Um, and then we can inspect that JSON file here and see that um, we took that PostGIS data and um, got our features, our, our geoservices JSON in return. So that's all great for our verifying. What we want to do, um, next we can look at adding it to uh, different mapping clients. So the the uh, source code has a, a view, some view examples, and you can go in and, and actually uh, just um, supplement it with your the data that you want to do, and you can and you can take a look at it. So here's uh, essentially a uh, just a map feature layer that we use, and again we put in our our URL for that. And then we just add that layer, um, append the layers to it and add it to the map. And we can take a look at what that would look like. Um, we open a map and voila, there it is. So we have our, our trails layer and we can switch this here to look at uh, airports and update the map and we'll see that. So pretty cool. Um, next we can do the same thing, but this time we'll export it out as a vector tile layer. Um, so another um, uh, vector tile layer supported in the ESRI leaflet library. And then we can do the same thing, but this time we call our output part of the URL to the vector tile server. And we'll add that as a tile layer to a map. And we can see what that looks like. Uh, with our vector tile 
And yeah, so we have our Tundra polygon layer there. Um, and we can just update that to see it in real time to our airports as well. Redraw it and yeah, we have our airports. Um, so that's all cool. That's for, for web development. If you uh, wanted to add it to using some web library that supports these types of formats, these vector tile URL formats or and or um, uh, the GeoJSON uh, from the GeoServices output. Um, another aspect uh, is that you can just go into ArcGIS Online, right? So, uh, which was the main motive uh, to building this. So if we look at uh, ArcGIS Online here, we got a few of uh, those the layers that we've been playing with here, the airports and the tundra, and these come in as uh, web maps and see here that uh, if we load that up, it's it's actually now a, a ArcGIS Online feature layer straight from PostGIS. Um, and then we can look at that here in a web map and you can see that you can, here you can do styling and whatever you want to do with the data because now it's essentially a, a feature layer uh, in the um, ArcGIS Online. Uh, here's that Tundra layer. Um, and so how do we do that? Uh, we'll try and dynamically put do that here. Uh, so we've got our trails layer now. And this is, uh, as you can see, just using the art, maybe you can see it's going to be a little bit small, but the ArcGIS um, um, web map viewer URL, and we're appending the um, um, the URL into our, our PG provider. So if we sign in to ArcGIS Online, uh, I should ask us to save that as a web map and let's do that. We'll call this one AK uh, Trails. Give an Alaskan tag. Russell for Alaskans out there, and we'll save it in that PG Coop folder. Let's save that map. And now we'll see the data uh, as a, a feature layer, right? And if we go back here and uh, to our content on ArcGIS Online, we'll see that it got added here, uh, AK Trails. So uh, let's take a look here and we'll return that. Um, so that's a quick quick walkthrough through the provider, a uh, little bit of an explanation of what Coop is and um, what its intentions are. Um, the final thing I'll just want to share with everyone is it's definitely a um, an open source repo. Uh, that anyone can contribute to um, if you're interested. Um, uh, from a developer perspective, it's pretty easy to get started. You just um, clone or fork the repo and uh, install the dependencies and then, and then uh, start the server. Uh, configure your database, um, as was described earlier, and start the server. And you can see how it all works and you can edit it. Um, something I'd like to do uh, in the future is uh, build a little dashboard so that it, you know so that the um, app itself uh, queries whatever database table and gives you a list of all the different schemas and tables that are available at, in that database uh, and then potentially allows you to authenticate with your ArcGIS online account and just do a one-click you know UI out in front of the service uh, that automatically converts it into um, the geoservices or as a feature layer through the geoservices JSON on ArcGIS Online. So you could do sort of a one-click one uh, click publish from the app. So yeah, that's all that I have for today. So definitely thank you all for your attention, sticking around.
Yeah. Thanks, um, and if you have any questions, I'd be happy to. Uh, so Rowan uh, has a question from Australia, and it's kind of similar to what I was going to ask. Um, I've always been intrigued by Coop. Same here. It seemed to go dormant a while back, but looks like Esri staff are back contributing to it. Any idea what Esri are using it for? Um, I, no, I'm definitely not part of the uh, Coop team. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, yeah, I can't really answer specifically what they're using it for. Uh, only, only what we're taking advantage for. I mean, the main, the main. Uh, purpose of the service is to really to get data into of all kinds of different formats into uh, the ArcGIS system, so to speak. Um, but it's open, it's open enough to where you can provide these different providers, you know, these different uh, data inputs, you can also extend it to, to different outputs, right. So it's, um, so while it's definitely concentrated on providing data into that, that geo uh, JSON format that we, we talked about, um, and it's pretty extensible. Uh, I found it very easy to use. It's great. It's a really nice, easy, um, um, easy to contribute to, easy to provide these outputs and providers. And yeah, I agree. It seems uh, uh, getting a little more traction again. Is there any authentication you can wrap around it? Because it feels like if you have to make your data public in order to get it to ArcGIS online, that's a bit of a big. <laughs> Yeah, there's authentication. But you're talking about in the provider or with Coop itself? Um, uh, yeah, with the yeah with the well both sides. You need authentication to the database, but um, yeah. I think more on the outside. Like if I'm going to Coop, if I got some private data, but I want to publish it out via ArcGIS Online, I don't want to have to have a public provider. Right. Yeah, there are authentication uh, models within the Coop server that you can. Yeah, so you can get it pretty sophisticated. It's got a caching system. You can extend that caching system. Um, it actually has a PostGIS provider for cache. You could actually cache through your PostGIS. Um, but yeah, there's also authentication uh, uh, layers as well that you can provide. So you can make it fairly sophisticated. So it's dynamic. How dynamic is it? Like if you showed data coming all the way from the post server out to an ArcGIS online map, but then go and edit the post server. How, how real time will the. Yeah, like, that's expected to happen changes. in pretty much in real time. So if, yeah, if you make the edits on the post GIS side, um, all it takes is a refresh or recall to that URL endpoint to see those updates. So yeah, it's yeah. Um, really dynamic in that fashion. Has anyone else brought any questions forward? Okay. Um, thank you very much, Dan, for coming in and telling us about Coop. Hey, I appreciate it. Yep. It's a great day. And thanks for having me. Yeah.